Hi everyone, this is Vlad from Modulus Render and in today's tutorial we're going to talk about the dark mood bathroom scene that I did using SketchUp and Enscape. So here we have the 3D model uh, of this bathroom. There's a towel, there's some uh, accessories, so it's uh, not a lot, it's basically an empty uh, scene, but the most important thing about this uh, image or this set of images is the lighting. So uh, I wanted to get this really dark mood and I'll just show you the reference photo that I have here. Uh, this is the image I wanted to recreate and I always advise um, the people I'm talking to or my students to take an image that you like, kind of analyze it, dissect it, and try to reproduce it in uh, in Enscape, and SketchUp, and whatever you're working, uh, whatever software you're using, just to have uh, photographic references of the materials, of the lighting, and kind of to uh, practice reproducing that in your own software. So for this one, I chose this image. It's a, it's a cool bathroom by Norm Architects which I love and I keep using them as a reference so check them out and to achieve this I was looking at the lighting the overall mood so it's a very dark uh, room with one window or a bright light com coming from the left we have some highlights uh, that I wanted to have in my image and also the material of this stone is very important and the grouts or the the sealant in between also so i wanted to have these subtle details uh present in uh in 3d so if we take a look at the model you'll see the the door or the entryway uh, we used some imperfection maps here on the door and then we have this big texture with uh, a stone tiles big stone tiles around the bathroom there are some dirt maps on the faucet here on the shower also on the mirror there's a lot of uh, dirt that i like but this is uh very faded in the final images i just wanted to have it there so you can see it and then for the lighting i used a lot of spotlights that i turned into this kind of a uh, light panel made out of a lot of lot of uh, spotlights and i'll show you why in a minute because we have a lot of uh, light sources that again combined they give us this very very soft uh, shadow that I'm looking for so I can have this kind of uh, you know very soft fall off of the shadows into my scene and for that of course I use a lot of light sources now for the modeling I want to show you I have the interior of the bathroom here and I kind of drew uh, with just simple lines the the stone slabs let's say or the big tiles that we have here and then uh, if i don't know if you've noticed i wanted to model all the grouts in between so you'll see a lot of detail from everywhere or every angle exactly like in the reference image I wanted to have this um, sealant visible wait a minute autosave I usually take out autosave but then I lose a lot of work sometimes so I enabled it again sorry about that so you see there's a lot of uh, grouts and stuff so I wanted to have this detail visible in the renders and the way I did that 
first of all, I took the the tiles, the stone tiles, and I selected all of them, and then I used joint push pull and uh, the normal push pull um, has these extra settings on top. As you see here, I've uh, clicked on molding, uh, 25%. And what this does is when I click and pull, you'll see that the tiles are uh, not coming straight out of the wall, but they're molding uh, at a 25 degree angle you can change the angle, but I wanted to have this slight uh, gap in between, not so big, you know, that you can uh, see it, but just a little bit so it's there, you know, so something like this. I'll show you in the next stage of the modeling what I mean. So it's a very slight, come on. So it's a very slight uh, gap in between the tiles. And then the grouts and everything in between, I just selected everything. And then with selection toys, you just select the edges, move them out of the way. And then on these edges, I just applied uh, with Profile Builder just a simple circle all around so it's a, lot, a bunch of cylinders that you see here and these are the the grouts in between and then i just move this over on top uh, of the stone and this is the look or the result that you have and then I just applied the, the texture the stone texture all over these slabs or tiles so I wanted uh, like a light gray for the, the grout so they're a little bit lighter than the stone and they would be visible in the render so something similar to what we have here where you can see these grouts they're almost invisible but you can see them if you pay attention so here over there over there and so on let me just close these other than that it's a simple you know, box with one window. Not a lot of complicated things. Then the towel, I made the towel with uh, Clothworks. Clothworks is a great uh, plugin for uh, simulating cloths and materials and stuff like that. Uh, which is awesome to have inside of SketchUp. So I'm just going to show you. I made these uh, this plane here, and then I where is it? Clothworks. I made it a cloth, and then I applied a a grid to have some subdivisions. And it created this kind of grid on my plane. I positioned it at an angle because I wanted to fall over the, the side of the bathtub, which is this thing here. And then um, for the cloth, I don't think it was custom. I think I put it on cotton. So cotton would be great. And then a cool thing that Clothworks has is this adaptive remeshing, which you can bump up to eight 
so refine one two three to eight i put it on two which means that wherever there's a collision with uh, the bathtub or, or with the collider wherever these meet it will add uh subdivisions so the folding is uh smoother in those areas without adding subdivisions in the other areas that uh, don't collide so much with the object so it's basically adding uh, polygons where needed and not adding uh, polygons where you don't need them so uh this is really cool honestly i haven't gone up till eight i just went to three or four but usually two and then uh, apply some smoothing at the end uh, this usually works for me so this is the setup for uh, clothworks with refine to adaptive remeshing which is awesome and then we can just click on the simulation let's see if it works in real time so let's just simulate this and you'll see it falling and then here where we have a lot of creases there's going to be more subdivisions because of this uh, adaptive remeshing and as you can see it it's working pretty fast in real time and it's gonna fall it looks really good you can move around while it's doing this kind of checking it out and then you can stop it if you feel this is like the look uh, you want, you can just hit stop. And that's it. And then if we look at the subdivisions, we can smooth these. We go to Clothworks and uh, either Loop Subdivision or Laplace Smoothing. But I use uh, Loop Subdivision and we wait a little bit. And it should smooth everything out so we can have a close up. Oh yeah, so now we have enough subdivisions in our model. It should have kept the, the texture. Let's see if we unwrap this. It should keep this texture. Let's see. And then why didn't it toggle? Oh yeah, and then fold it back. Aha. So with this button here, you can uh, toggle the draping and it goes back flat. You can reapply this texture or another texture and then uh, drape it again without doing the whole simulation. So it goes from step one to the final one. And it's pretty cool because you can change a lot of things. You can add thickness uh, to this using, where is it, um, generate thickness. And this is basically it. I'm just going to show you the final result, which is here. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I, I added some thickness to it. So this basically looks like that. And on top of this, I used scatter to create this subtle fuzz 
on the towel so this is i i just made these uh strands uh using freehand just kind of going crazy with with all kinds of uh shapes and i scattered them of course using scatter which is a uh, an amazing tool and i called it fuzz so you have it here i just scattered uh, those shapes on my towel so i have uh, some you know similarity to the reference photo and of course towels have these little hairs on them and for the material i just added some uh, displacement in enscape so let's go to Enscape and check out the lighting. Now this is our Enscape view. As you can see the effect of all these spotlights. They give us this really, really nice soft uh, shadow that we see even on the wall. So you see this kind of uh, soft shape of a shadow over there and also this soft shadow here and here I wanted to show you let me just turn off the fuzz on the towel because it's slowing down my scene and here uh, I wanted to show you this I, I put a black uh, box so uh so the shadow doesn't leak through or the light doesn't leak through you if you look over here let's see hello welcome to auto save we'll be back in just one second okay so we're back um as i was saying if you take a look over here at this shadow where I put the, the little box so there's no light leaking if I just delete this you'll see the the shadows coming back slowly but then you'll see here this kind of uh, lighter area which doesn't really make sense so it's uh, a shortcut that Enscape is taking to kind of uh, make these shadows but if I just put the box back you'll see this area here getting uh, darker as it should so let's just undo that and then you'll see this darker area here which looks better in my opinion so you can use this to kind of uh, add some extra darkness to your shadows if we take a look at the materials let me just get closer to this towel and you'll see here this uh, displacement let's turn on the fuzz so you can see it too it's not so visible it's just barely visible but you know your eyes can perceive this kind of irregularities so it looks good in the final image and then here for the displacement let's just go to materials this is, I mean, uh, Enscape has this very, very fake displacement, but in some instances, it's just great. Doesn't, you know, destroy your uh, uh, memory. Uh, you can use it uh, on any computer, I think. So it's it's really easy on the hardware. Where is the material?
Let's select that one. So you see we have this map. And five for the displacement and that's it. Of course, if you go really, really close, then you'll be able to tell how how fake it is. But if we look at it from here, it looks really good. Let me just turn on the fuzz off again so I can move easier. So now it should move faster. I have to mention that for the fuzz, I I didn't use proxies. I just put it as um, geometry. So I'm not going to do that again because it slows down the, uh, the workflow a little bit. And it slows down the model. But if it's proxy, it's no problem. And... What else do I have here? Uh, we have some marble here. And then on the mirror, as I told you, there are some imperfections or, or some dirt. And I just faded that. Let me see. So I just faded the texture so it's not so visible. So about 20% of the texture image is visible. So we have this slightly dirty mirror. Now for the lighting, for this beautiful dark soft light, very Nordic um, cold light, I used spotlights as I was saying the more light sources you have and the more you blend them together the softer the shadows are and of course for uh, spotlights you can adjust the cone and the intensity so here the beam angle is maximum just 90 degrees and uh, intensity is at 30. And you can see how soft these uh, shadows are and how smooth and, you know, very, very nice gradient are, uh, is created by this uh, technique. Now, if we go to the settings, um, I'll just go through them. Exposure is at 55. I never use auto exposure. Field of view, 35. And then no auto contrast either. Just shadows down to minus 100. Highlights, 50%. Uh, saturation is at 80, but there's no real colors here, so... Uh, this can be 100. I don't think it makes a difference. Just a little bit. Uh, no vignette, no chromatic aberration, nothing. No sun. And for the sky, I just used my white dome HDRI. Just a white, clean uh, light everywhere. And then I think this was the final uh, aspect ratio of the images. I wanted to make some uh, portrait images, not landscape. And from here, we just set up our cameras and we can start rendering out our scenes. Now these are some of the images that I made using this technique. As you can see, we have the fuzz here on the towel, the nice soft gradient from the shadows. 
which looks really, really soft. You can barely see some of the dirt on the mirror. All those details showing up. And it looks really good. That's it for today's tutorial. I hope you found this information useful. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button and I'll see you in the next tutorial.